Welcome to Arthritis at Home. I'm Maya and I'm the program coordinator at Arthritis Consumer Experts. I'm pleased to welcome Wendy Gerhardt to our program today. Wendy is the executive director at the Canadian Spondylitis Association and has been working with the organization since March 2017. Prior to her current role with CSA, Wendy spent 26 years in the pharmaceutical industry, working in market access and stakeholder engagement in several therapeutic areas, including chronic inflammatory conditions. She, she is passionate in raising awareness of spondyloarthritic conditions and a strong advocate committed to reducing the time to diagnosis and ensuring Canadians have access to the treatments and services needed to improve personal health outcomes and reduce unnecessary burden on the healthcare system. Thank you so much for joining us today, Wendy. Thank you for having me, Maya. Happy to be here. Wonderful. So just to start, could you tell us a little bit about the Canadian Spondylitis Association? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So the Canadian Spondylitis Association um, has been around for um, uh, quite some time. Um, it was founded in 2008. Um, and from 2008 until 2017, it was um, led by a volunteer board. So they didn't have any paid staff. And, um, you know, it was primarily the president at the time, Michael Mallinson, who did pretty much uh, the majority of work. And so in 2017, upon Michael's retirement, um, the board recognized the need to, um, to hire um, an executive director or a staff member to come in and really be responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the organization. And with that, you know, when you bring somebody on to, to run the day-to-day -day operations, um, you really are looking to, to forward growth and, and really building the organization to um, the capacity that it really can be to support the community. And so um, the organization supports all of the spondyloarthritic conditions. Um, so it, there's an umbrella of, of conditions. So that includes like ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis, um, enteropathic arthritis, undifferentiated, um, juvenile. So there's quite there's quite a, um, a number of different conditions that kind of fall under that umbrella. So we're, we're here to support them. Um, fast forward to today, um, the organization is currently led by a volunteer board. Um, every individual that's on the board actually has um, one of the spondyl, spondyloarthritic conditions or is impacted by it. So one, one gentleman, it's his son who has um, AS. Um, and, and we really have done a good job of um, bringing a lot of expertise onto our board. So I'm really excited uh, with the support that we have in place to grow the organization. Operationally, we're small but mighty. Um, so there's myself. Um, I have a gentleman who helps me out with IT and social media. And then we've also been really fortunate to get some government uh, funding to have summer students for the past few summers. So that's been really helpful to uh, give us an extra boost, an extra set of hands to kind of keep things moving along. Right, wonderful. Well, thank you. And um, would you mind explaining a bit about how Canadian Spondylitis Association helps people living with these different forms of spondyloarthritis that you mentioned? Yeah, so, well, first and foremost, I think, um, you know, the way we do a lot of help is we listen and we learn. Um, we don't pretend to be the experts. Um, the patients are the experts. So we spend a lot of time listening to the community um, and, and not only patients. So really, when we think about the community and talk about it, it's really everybody who is impacted um, by spondyloarthritis, or spondyloarthritis. So it could be patients, it could be caregivers. Um, loved ones, friends, um, and we also don't want to forget about the healthcare professionals who are actually treating and working with patients um, to improve their outcomes. Um, so what else, how, do, how, how else do we help um, people living? Um, well, everything we do is really with um, the, the, the patient journey and experience in mind. Um, so we, we try to provide a wide range of programs and, and that kind of thing. So webinars in the past pre-COVID, we would do information sessions. Um, we have our website that we're constantly adding new um, content to. Um, and really just, you know, listening to the community and reacting to what they're looking for to make sure they're feeling really supported and that they have a place to call home. Right, perfect. And uh, speaking of webinars, as you mentioned, 
can you tell us what programs and events are in store for the Canadian Spondylitis Association in 2021? Yeah, so we actually have um, uh, the, the, the year is shaping up to be really busy. Um, in the past, as I mentioned, pre-COVID, we generally did a lot of information sessions. Um, COVID forced us to pivot very quickly and start offering webinars, which were really well received and um, really allowed us to reach a larger uh, community, as you can imagine. Um, and so we have several webinars planned throughout the year on topics uh, of interest to the community. Um, we're also planning to hold several uh, webinars in French, which we have not done before. Um, so as part of um, the growth of our, of our board, we do have two individuals who live in Quebec now and are, are bilingual, so that helps. Um, so we're planning to do that. Um, you know, it's doubtful in 2021, we'll be able to do any in-person information sessions, um, albeit they're so popular and, and they're really well received. So we're hoping to get back to doing those in 2022. Um, we're also really pleased to be launching our young adults uh, resources shortly. Um, we, we really heard loud and clear um, through a number of different um, surveys and just feedback from young adults that their journey is quite different from other people who are diagnosed or who have lived with the condition longer. And so, you know, we wanted to really focus on providing resources targeted for that age demographic. Um, so we're going to be launching some information on our website shortly. Um, we have um, also developed, um, we have support groups, um, which we have run across the country. Pre-COVID, they were in person, um, very quickly pivoted to doing virtual, which has been, again, very well received, as you can imagine. Um, and so we'll probably, I know a lot of the groups are quite anxious to meet again in person when it's safe to, um, but a lot have also, you know, mentioned that they'll probably do a hybrid and, and kind of offer both so that um, um, everybody's needs are being met. Um, we were able to um, 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 offer more uh, types of, of support in 2021 or sorry, in 2020. And, and we do actually have like a young adult support group um, on Facebook as well as they meet virtually. Um, and so they're really excited and that community is growing very quickly. Um, so it's exciting to see that. And then we were also able to get um, a mom's group off the ground. So not necessarily aimed at young, young moms, but really just uh, a place where moms could come and, um, and chat and, and talk about all the things that moms need to talk about while they live with these conditions. And I love that there's these separate programs for different groups of people because there are different needs that young folks like myself who have arthritis compared to mothers or caregivers. So I that's so wonderful to hear. It sounds like you're really yeah, making sure yeah. that it's meaningful. And, and, I, and I think in 2022, we will eventually go down the route of, you know, exploring if there is an interest for like a man's group, like a, a male group to get together. Um, cause a lot of times, you know, on these Facebook groups, it's generally women and do men feel comfortable chiming in and being a part of that. So it's something that we'll definitely kind of explore. And if there's an interest, um, like I said, we just pivot to the needs of the community and, uh, as best we can. And if we can bring together programs for on specific topics or, or the two, two specific audiences, uh, we pivot quickly and, and try and. Uh, bring those to life. So one of your most recent webinars was uh, on COVID-19 vaccines for folks with spondyloarthritis or other autoimmune disease. Um, what are some of the key messages from that webinar? Because I think it's information that our community is super keen to hear right now. Well, it's definitely the hot, uh, the hot topic. We had, uh, it, it, it broke our record for registrations, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, you know, it's a hot topic and an important topic and a very serious topic. I, I think one of the most important messages really came out of it to me was, you know, um, for people to speak to their health care providers. Um, you know, everybody's journey and personal, you know, history is, is unique and different from, you know, their neighbors. And I think um, my messaging to patients when they're reaching out to me is really talk to your healthcare professional, um, your healthcare provider. Um, you know, 
uh, I think the other key message that came out of it was really, you know, the current evidence, and I, I kind of parenthesize current, because um, it's, it's going to be changing, right? Um, so, you know, based on the current evidence, as Dr. Haroon suggested, for the most part, people living with spondyloarthritis um, should be getting the vaccinations that there's not, there's not a lot of concern. Um, but really, again, going back to check with your healthcare provider about your personal situation, your personal fear. Um, you know, I, I'm always encouraging patients to not listen to the various chatter on the b different blogs because um, you, you know, you, you, you get so many perspectives and, and, and so much advice um, on the various blogs. And I know most of it is all with the best of intention, but again, people should take that into moderation and really always check back with your healthcare professional. They know your history, they know you, and they'll be able to make that right. Yes, get the vaccination or no, hold off and here's why. Definitely, and I guess there's also different um, vaccination plans happening in different regional areas. Uh, for example, I, I saw that ARC uh, posted today about BC and that uh, looks like folks who are immunocompromised in BC might be getting it in a priority population, but in different provinces. Okay. Different. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, um, it's interesting how it's gonna look different right across the country. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, people are gonna be looking over at their neighbor in BC saying, well, why are they vaccinated? And I haven't even, it's not even been mentioned kind of thing. So yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things. It's a little bit like access to medications. It's like you look mm -hmm. over the, the border to your neighbor to your right. And it's like, well, why is, you know, X product um, available to those people? And us sitting here in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, it's not available to us. So it's, it's gonna unravel a little bit like that. And I think we just all have to be really patient. We know we're gonna get it and, um, and our term will come. Yeah, and definitely just, just to emphasize what you said then of, of how important it is to talk to your healthcare provider, each of us as patients, as there'll be different circumstances and different barriers. And yeah, so thank you for your wisdom on that. <laughs> Um, lastly, I'm wondering if there are any resources uh, from CSA that you would like to share with our audience. Yeah, so that's a bit of a loaded question. I'm not really sure where to start. We, we have lots on the go. We, we accomplished a lot in 2020. Um, I guess I would just start off by saying I encourage everybody to check out our website regularly um, as we're scheduling, scheduling our, our webinars for 2021. We do have uh, a nutrition one already scheduled for March and we have um, a mental health one scheduled for April. So we're working through the year and getting those scheduled and up on our website. So I encourage people to visit the website um, regularly to check those out. Um, we've also, you know, we're launching new content as I mentioned. So um, encourage people to check our website out, um, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Um, any of those platforms where we can share out our information, we certainly will do that. Um, join any of our, our support groups. And I guess lastly, I just encourage everybody who is infected by spondyloarthritis to also join and become a member of our, our community. Um, there's lots of communities out there and, you know, um, Arthritis Consumer Experts does great work and uh, Kappa does great work and Arthritis Society does great work. So really encourage people to be a member of many communities um, because everybody is really doing a lot of great work and we all kind of do a little bit of different work. So um, I think the more people, the more opportunities people have to learn and to be informed, um, you know, the stronger their outcomes are gonna be um, and, and feeling better supported. Thank you so much for being on our program. Um, CSA has so many valuable resources. I actually recently shared your website and your support group with a friend of mine who has uh, uh, enclosing spondylitis. So I can speak very highly of everything you do. It's uh, our, our privilege at ACE to get to partner with you on different projects. And as you yeah. said, all of us are doing complementary things and different things and each focusing on different. Uh, yeah. it, it is a really tight community and, um, you know, I, I learn a lot from my esteemed colleagues at other organizations and 
um, really value what they have to bring. Um, and like you say, collectively and collaboratively, um, we're all working towards the same goal, which is improving patient outcomes, making sure they have access to medications and services um, to, to improve their lives. And, um, you know, as we, as we know, there's no cure for these conditions right now. So we have to do everything we can to make people's lives better um, until there is a, uh, till there is a cure. Well, thank you so much again, Wendy. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us and we're gonna link some of these resources that you've shared uh, just below this video. So our audience has easy access to it. That would be fabulous, thank you. And, and thank you for inviting me. this was a great opportunity. Of course. And uh, lastly, we just want to thank our viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in. And please feel free to leave any feedback that you have on social media, or you can email us at feedback at jointhealth.org.